So CQRS or command query responsibility segregation is probably one of those things that you've been using for a long time, but you didn't know that it had a name. And it's the basic idea of separating reads from writes. So the basic simple definition that I'm going to give you, because if you read the web, it's, it's a carnage out there. People are going over literally nothing. And the idea is, you don't have to use a single service to host your reading and writing workers, or you don't even have to use a single database to host your writes and reads. And uh, this is not new, something new. We've been doing it for a long time. And uh, <laughs> I have a feeling that uh, radical CQRSs people have taken this idea and run with it so far and produced what uh, the monstrosity that we call microservices today. So let's go and, <laughs> and discuss uh, CQRS in a nutshell. I'm gonna uh, break it down into three parts and uh, obviously I'm gonna get some people mad because I'm gonna oversimplify it. <laughs> How about we jump into it? So here's an example, guys. So CQRS, uh, without segregating anything, right? You have a customer service uh, with a lot of endpoints. You can add a customer, update a customer, you can get customers, and you can also get recommendations. I don't know what total is. That's another sum of something, right? And this backend service hits back the OLTP, uh, the online transactional database. So you're using a relational database and it's a row store because you're writing and that's optimized for writes, okay? So, so if you're gonna do a partial separation, this is what we're gonna look like, okay? Since we're adding customers and updating customers, right? Let's put this in another service and let's put the get customer recommendation and slash total in a completely different service. And that's, we've been doing this for a long time, right? You can separate rights from right. What's the benefit of this? Well, people who add customers and update customers, the backend connection pool to the database should only be using a database user with the right permission, right? And versus the second service, we'll get a simple user with a basic read permissions. And I've, I've talked about this in, in, as a best practice in, in the back end. Check out the video right here. But this, so you get, you get nice security aspects of this. So it's, a, it's beneficial, right? And you can take it all the way and do full separation like this example, where, yeah, you have two services, but let's, let's just also separate the databases altogether. Write permissions and write workloads can be, can continue to use the OLTPDB, right, row stores, right, so the, all, the, all the columns are organized in row format, right, and I can use a Postgres database, for example, here. While the reads, I know that I can benefit from a column store in certain situation. Right, so I'm gonna use an OLAP database, a column store OLAP database, and uh, point my other service to this. So I, now I gain not only security, I got also performance for free. So this is essentially for separation idea of this. And uh, it's very, very powerful, if you can see, right? And uh, the final thing here is scalability. I can take my read service and spin up 300 of those because I have more readers than writers, right? And I can let my writer service be a little bit more replicated, a little bit more partitioned, so I can I can play with all this and I can run with it. And you can go full way separation with this. So that idea, I think, not 100% sure, but I think it gave the birth of microservices, which is a, not a bad idea, but I think we took it way to the extreme and we made a monster out of it as, as it currently stand, okay? So what's the cons of CQRS? Guys, it's exactly very similar to the cons of microservices as it stands today. It's complexity. When you start separating things forcefully, it does not mean that they essentially naturally fit in that separation. And then Mark, Martin Fowler in his blog explain this beautifully. 
Right? He says, hey, guys, in 2011, before there was this microservices badness, he said, guys, I know CQRS is, uh, sounds good, but sometimes your workload is just a normal CRUD, C-R-U-D, create, read, update, and delete. So leave it as is. If you, if you don't need to separate things, because separation, yeah, it, 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 have less, little, little, uh, it has less coupling, but it introduces complexity because now you have things that used to live together. Now you're forcefully separating them. And plus, some writes actually needs reads. And if you want to do, like, go by the Bible of CQRS, you have to separate every read and every write. And that just does not make any sense in certain uh, workloads. Right. It just some writes have to do a read. You want me to do that right read in a separate place and do a write? It does not make sense. So you have to think really. So I think Martin Fowler actually predicted this mess that we're in. And uh, just be careful of this. CQRS is not bad. It's just is that a good idea? You know, now you know the name, but just, just be careful with it. Just don't go nuts. Know about it, because as we saw, see in this channel, know that it exists, and then pick the things that you like about it, and then run with that. All right, guys, uh, thank you so much. Um, this is a very quick video about CQRS. Uh, I'm going to make another video about dr domain-driven design once I, I go deep into that and, and kind of discuss that and give you my opinion about that. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye, yo.